What's up, party people? I'm Jay Campbell. And I'm Hunter Williams. And today we're making a video on the best therapeutic testosterone and hormonal optimization delivery systems for women, chicas. Yeah, uh, a lot of people, you know, obviously testosterone is huge for men. One thing in the world today that is just an environment, you know, environmental toxic soup that we live in, uh, everyone's testosterone levels are being affected, not just men. Uh, women in particular, especially women, you know, once they get over the age of really, I would say 30 uh, in this day and age with the environment. So today, you know, we beat the dead horse of the best delivery systems yeah. for men with uh, cream and injections. But today we're actually going to talk about women because obviously hormonal optimization looks a lot different for women. So we're going to kind of talk about what the best best methods of delivery are for them. And uh, fortunately for them, it's a little bit easier than most guys. Yeah. So here we go. Um, first thing first, pellets are the least effective delivery system for women and men, of course. But uh, why is that? The, so, so the answer to that is complex, but I'm going to break it down for you guys. Very, very simple, because again, we don't like to make super long when the video is here, because we know you don't have attention spans with all the stuff going on in your lives today. But uh, pellets, when you put them in the skin, um, and they're obviously then now cleaving in the biological systems of your body and into your bloodstream. They don't ever cleave at a universal rate and speed. So some people are hyper excretors. They rip through the testosterone uh, pellet fast. Uh, you got to understand that the physicians that are input in putting these pellets in are putting them in at like six, eight, 12 week periods. And if you're a hyper excreter of testosterone, whether you're a male or a woman, and obviously we're talking mostly about women in this video, you may burn through that pellet in two to three weeks or four weeks. And now you got to wait excruciating double the time where you don't have any testosterone reserves anymore because the pellet, you've already burned through the pellet. And now you're sitting there and you're in agony. Your, your, your uh, hormones are at the floor. You feel like absolute dog shit. And your doctor can't, you know, titrate the dosage because that's the formulation that you're on. You have to wait until the end. So besides that, uh, the body also acclimates to the testosterone uh, pellet very fast. Most people who have had two, perhaps three pellet regimens or courses uh, eventually develop a resistance to the pellet. Uh, they also start having issues with like, you know, depending on the physician who's uh, surgically implanting the pellet, you get scar tissue. Uh, you can get a bad pellet excision or incision where the pellet extrudes and then you get an infection. I mean, I could go on and on and on. The pellets are universally poorly absorbed, poorly adhered to, not adhered to, but just poorly. The, the results over time are poor. Most people that start on pellets get a negative, uh, you know, uh, opinion and attitude about using therapeutic hormones or therapeutic testosterone specifically, and then end up going you know, online and telling people that it doesn't work. Uh, and on top of, and the last remaining uh, statement is they're the most expensive form of therapy, which hello, of course, doctors are trying to make money. As Dr. Keith Nichols always says, there has never been a single randomized control trial ever done using pellets. And the reason that is, is that the scientific community knows that pellets are worth a shit are, are worthless. They're not worth a shit. So if you're a pellet user, listen deeper. So moving into 2024 now, uh, when it comes to women and delivery systems, there's essentially two, and I should say three, but three, two accepted, three universally accepted forms of delivery that uh, any woman can use. And that is obviously transdermal, right? So you can place a transdermal cream and they, they come in various dosages for women um, at the, the, the head of the clitoris, uh, the lips of the, of the labia of the vagina or anywhere else in the skin. But just like in transcrotal testosterone cream application in men, the skin of the base of the scrotum is extremely permeable. It's eight times in studies more permeable than any other skin complex. It's the same way with the clitoral hood in the woman's vagina or even the vaginal, the labia lips, again, because of the sensitivity. Again, men and women have very similar sensitivities for sexual function and obviously, um, you know, excitatory pathways and stuff down there for when people are pleasured. So it's very similar in the absorption. But beyond that spot or beyond those places, sometimes women will also place them here, here, inner thighs, you know, again, large skin complexes, but it will not absorb as equally well as it will, again, in the clitoral hood or the lips of the labia, just as a man in the, in the base of the scrotum. Now, besides transdermal application, there is also now, which was what my wife is using, and a lot of women are starting to use this, a very new uh, and highly effective form of an oral capsule. Mm -hmm. Now, before you say, Jay, you're talking about an oral testosterone booster capsule. Does it work for men? It doesn't work for men. 
uh, because the ones that are, are FDA approved that are on the market for men, the Testo, and then there's a couple other ones now. I think T Lando. I don't know all their names. It doesn't matter. But there's like three of them now. In the clinical research, you will see that it will take a man from hypogonadal type two classification, which is like you know 80 to 180 uh, total testosterone levels, and then move them into the three and the 400 range, right? Which is not optimized testosterone levels. It is getting you back to a normal level, but who the fuck wants to be normal in today's day and age when we're being contaminated in our environment from all causes and all angles, right? So it's like those capsules for men don't work as effective, but for women, it's a much smaller dosage. And again, remember, women don't require as much therapeutic testosterone as a man does. We have different biological system functioning. We have different uh, uh, you know, genetic uh, requirements. Obviously, the difference between a man and a woman is the amount of testosterone in utero when uh, a zygote is fertilized. So at, at the end of the day, a man requires a higher dosage of therapeutic testosterone. And in an oral capsule, it cannot work because of the way it, it metabolizes uh, in the system through hepatic function, through first pass to the liver. But for women, it can because women require a much smaller dosage. So depending on this, you know, the individual end user, the patient, the female patient, uh, and what le uh, issues they have with hormones, they may require testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone. You know, and again, whether they're premenopausal, perimenopausal, or postmenopausal, that is all going to depend on their individual lab work, right? So you can, and they're doing this now, compound testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone capsules, just as they can do a combination of one or one in isolation or two out of the three. So it's very interesting, very unique, but very customized and tailored to that individual woman. Uh, my wife, Monica, now is, uses testosterone and progesterone. Um, and they, she has actually a, a separate progesterone cap that she takes at night before sleep because it makes her sleepy. And then she has a separate testosterone lozenge or capsule. I think it's a lozenge she's taking now, but again, there's capsules and lozenges that she takes in the morning. Okay. Um, so again, that's uh, transdermal optimal. And now this oral formulation, uh, if you're interested in doing that, obviously send me an email or leave a note in the comments field and I'll, I'll, you know, connect you with the folks at MHI. And Dr. Amy Wecker, who's working with this uh, oral version of testosterone now, the third formulation or, or delivery system would be injectable. But obviously, we don't recommend injectable for women because there aren't a lot of compound pharmacies out there making a low enough dosage in an injectable formulation. Most of the time, the women that are doing injecting are getting male designed 200 milligrams per cc of like sipinate or anethate. And then they're trying to like extrapolate a very tiny micro dose of it when it's already right, 200 right milligrams. Yeah. Very difficult to do. And it's very easily overdosed. And you don't want to overdose therapeutic testosterone as a woman because, again, obviously you can have virilization uh, and, you know, masculinization or, or, or masculine type side effects, deeper voice, you know, hair growth, um, you know, uh, in, in increasing the size of the clitoris. So, you know, those are things that are obviously to be avoided. And none of those things are side effects when you're given the, you know, cor correct dosages of transdermal uh, or the oral capsule. Did you want to add anything to that? Yeah, just that uh, with the oral goes, like someone might ask, well, why can men not do it, but women can? It's because women are much more androgen sensitive. So like Jay was saying, it's not that it wouldn't work on men. It's just not going to get you to where you want to go. Whereas a woman needs a very, very small dose and that can actually put her in the right range for testosterone. And, you know, as... Jay and I have worked with a lot of people. It seems like lately I've noticed a lot of women that aren't on hormone optimization therapy have really low testosterone levels. And these are women that are like health yeah. optimized. They do everything totally. right. They train right. They diet right. Um, so it's just one of those things. Like I think over the next few years, we're going to continue to see this huge decline in testosterone. So it's going to be obviously very important for men, but that much more important that women learn this uh, because, you know, their hormones are a lot more, uh, delicate yeah, and intricate than the men's hormones are. Um, so there's going to be more than just testosterone, but testosterone is as important for women as it is for men to their overall sexual function, their overall uh, health and well-being, cognitive function, and all those things. Um, so I think a lot of women don't, they'll look at every other thing before they look at testosterone, but you know, it's something that obviously get your blood work done and look at, um, it's going to be very important going forward. In the given future. a woman to echo what he just said, given, giving a woman therapeutic, surgically precise doses of therapeutic testosterone as the age is like giving a dry plant water. Yeah, literally that's how profound it is. Uh, I know so many women, um, you know, from the ages of 40 and up and even sometimes younger aging women, because again, their environment is so contaminated whose lives dramatically changed once they got a little bit of therapeutic dose of testosterone. So again, everything Hunter said is absolutely true. 
if you're a woman out there and you're in your 40s and 50s and you do not know if you're suffering from a hormonal deficiency, get your lab work done effective immediately. And then if you you know require a deeper dive analysis uh, or find out like what physicians to work with, just feel free to reach out. I'm Jay Campbell. I'm Hunter Williams. We love and appreciate you guys. We'll see you guys very soon. Peace.